Hey everybody, this is Neil from the Overclocker Magazine. So let's get right into it, okay? Today I have three products for you and all of them from Cooler Master. So it's a gaming monitor, a control pad, and a mouse. But I'm gonna start with the gaming monitor first because that's literally a first for Cooler Master. If you excuse the license plate name, you'll actually find that it hides what is effectively a really, really great gaming monitor. Now, there are a lot of monitors which have all of these specs right but not any of them not all of them at least can be overclocked to 200 hertz this one does support overclocking to 200 hertz obviously if you're using display port only however if you are at 200 hertz there are some compromises to image quality that you're going to have to make they are slight and for somebody like me who's not a professional gamer it's very hard to tell that oh, okay am i getting a slightly lower image quality and things of that nature unless you, you take professional equipment and you're actually measuring it then you're unlikely to notice it, at least I didn't. But for the sake of just simplifying my life, I just left it at 165 hertz. I don't think I'm losing anything by being there. In fact, I'm coming from what, 100 hertz to 165? Yeah, that is an upgrade for me. So I'm more than happy with that. But for the more enthusiastic people and the ones who like to experiment, definitely go 200 hertz. Maybe you can even go higher. So it's a VA panel, if I didn't say this, I'm saying it now. It's a VA panel, which I think is sourced from Samsung. And I don't know what kind of tuning that uh, Cooler Master has done to the panel, but from where I'm standing, the image quality looks pretty nice, especially when you're gaming. When it comes to text, it can be a little bit fuzzy sometimes, especially if you are looking at white text against a black background. It's almost as if when you're scrolling up and down, there's a little bit of a cutout, but it's not really a major issue. And like I said, this is a gaming monitor. So it's not for you to be typing log long text documents and things of that nature. But if you are going to be doing it, just be aware of that. I think it's something that you can address using the OSD, but I didn't get time to do any of that. Like most people, you get a monitor, you plug it in and just see how it goes. I made a few adjustments though. The one thing that I did do is turn up the gamma because of just the room that I'm in. I turned up the gamma to about 2.2 and I turned down the brightness. I think its default is about 50, the value. So I turned it down to about 30 or 25 and the image quality looks pretty nice. So at least it's comfortable for the kind of image that I want to expose myself to and what I need for my purposes. Now, more than what the monitor looks like in gaming, it really does look great. It's fast and I didn't see any pixel trailing or anything of the sort. Again, I'm not a professional gamer, so I may not necessarily be familiar with what it is I'm supposed to be looking out for but aesthetically this monitor actually speaks to me as well so I, there are these three lights at the back of the monitor that remind me of destiny or destiny logo or something of that nature now they are purple in color right just like I think this cooler master's color now is purple you can either have it on off or have it flicker I'm not so sure why you want the flicker I think if it was a breathing pattern that would work but the flicker just doesn't work for me so I just find it pretty useless but then again you can turn it on or off or have it flicker it just i just leave it on because it actually does look nice now as i said this monitor can be tilted can be swiveled and can be height adjustable as well but more than that is actually the build quality that i appreciate kudos to cooler master for putting together something that actually feels good and is aesthetically pleasing as well on top of being a very proficient gaming monitor i cannot speak for the 34 inch model uh, even though that one looks even better than this one on paper. But from what I've experienced here, I think this is a commendable offering from Cooler Master. And it's definitely something you should consider if you're looking at a gaming monitor for a reasonable amount of money. Because let's be honest, at 7,200, there are some monitors that you can get that are 4K. Some of them even with FreeSync, but that's FreeSync at 60 Hertz. Okay, so I don't know how useful that's going to be to you. And yes, some of them are IPS as well. But again, they're not going to give you that 165 hertz. You're not going to get the curve with it. You're not going to get FreeSync Premium with that. You're not going to get the 3 millisecond gray to gray uh, response time. There's so many things that you're not going to get. So you're basically just going to be chasing the resolution instead of chasing the entire gaming experience. And I must say, compared with a, four, with a cheap TN panel, like a 4K panel, compared to this monitor at 1080p with all the bells and whistles that it has, your gaming experience is definitely better on this monitor than on the 4K panel because it's not just the resolution, it's how everything is delivered to you. And this monitor delivers an experience that is more than the sum of its parts. You actually have to use it to actually appreciate it. Overall, this is a fantastic monitor and it's definitely something that is surprisingly good for Cooler Master's first foray into gaming monitors. Definitely check it out if you are in the market.
Next up is the MM711. So the reason I'm covering this uh, mouse again is be simply because it's just now available in new colors. We had a matte and a gloss finish of the mouse and I think it came in white and in black. So the only one, the one that I used was the black one. Please check out the full review of the MM711 that I did previously. But anyway, it is available in these two colors and just like the original one that I used, the black one, they look great. I think it looks even better in this I don't know if you can see it, but it, this this looks pretty. It looks pretty nice. So obviously, as you can see it in my hand, it's it's a fairly small mouse, and it's one of the things that I actually spoke about when I did the original review. It's such a comfortable mouse to use, and believe it or not, comfort is the most important thing for me right now when it comes to a mouse because that's the one thing that you're always using so it needs to be comfortable more than fancy and function and have all these fancy features it needs to be comfortable and still today there's nothing as comfortable for me as a symmetrical design of this so i really do appreciate that if there's any grievance i have about this mouse it's the fact that it's small so i hope that at some point in future cooler master releases an mm712 or something like that uh that's just the same mouse just slightly bigger this one definitely is my favorite mouse and it is my go-to mouse for pretty much everything that i do now and it's one that i hope to hold on to for a while until of course they make a bigger mouse and that's the one i'll switch to so next up is cooler master's control pad it's like a separate number pad that you can get from a number of vendors difference here though is that all these buttons are actually pressure sensitive how well that works? Well, we'll talk about that at a later point. In terms of build quality, of course, it's what I would expect from a device costing this much. So what are we talking about when we say costing this much? Well, it depending on the switch type that you get. You can get a Gatoron Red Switch or you can get the Cherry MX Red Switch. The Gatoron is cheaper. I think it's about 1700 and the Cherry MX Red one is about 2000. And in terms of color schemes, there's the gunmetal gray and then there's also the gunmetal black. Anyway, here's the cool thing about it or here's the interesting bit that I want to relate to you about using this control pad. Now I'll go back to the me telling you that this is an actually analog in nature and that has some certain repercussions and it means specific things. And it actually also means that you're going to take some time to get used to this. It's a control method or it's an input method that you can appreciate in practice only after you've used this for a while. It's something that you can appreciate intellectually if you're just told that, oh, it's an amalgamation of uh, an analog input method and a digital one. But in practice, which is how you want this to be beneficial, it's gonna take some time to get used to. However, when you are used to it, it will make it difficult for you to just go back to a normal keyboard, which is at least that's what's happening to me. The thing is, because of its analog nature, there is also a dead zone, right? And then obviously it's progressively more pressure, the further down you push and whatnot, and that translates into something that you see on screen in your character movement. Now, knowing where that bite is, if you want, if, if you will, it's going to be tough. It's going to be something that you're going to have to get used to. And it's not the same across all games. When you are used to it, it's actually nothing like it. It makes it okay to game without the keyboard in front of me. So I can put the keyboard aside and just have this control pad and my mouse and I'm good to go. And I'm just as proficient as I would be with the keyboard. So past just the gaming side of this thing, you can actually use this for productivity as well. So you'll notice when you load Cooler Master's Master Plus software, it has profiles for some Adobe uh, products. So there are 24 keys here, which you will map to Photoshop, Illustrator, or Premiere Pro. At least those are the profiles that I saw. Either way, you can map this automatically to the control pad. So it brings all your shortcuts nearer to you and so forth. It actually makes you more productive. Again, it's something that you're gonna have to get used to in knowing where the placement of the buttons are. So if you buy this as is, you're not gonna, you're gonna have no keycaps. It's going to make getting used to the keypad take a little bit longer than it should. It's not like on a regular number pad on a keyboard where it's only four buttons across and or not all the buttons are of the same length. So for instance, the enter button and the plus button, those are a bit longer on a normal number pad, right? So just, you can tell by just how they feel which button you're holding. So this is not the case here because as you can see, this entire part here, all these buttons are the same size. So orientating your, or getting your fingers used to button placement can be a bit challenging, at least it was for me. 
However, like with the analog nature of the input of this controller, it's something that you have to get used to. And once you are used to it, then that issue of button placement and whatnot just simply goes away. You actually come to just memorize where these buttons are. But it is something that is worthwhile having if you have dual purpose for it like I do. Let me know what you think about this sort of thing and if you would be interested in something like this. In fact, are you actually using this right now? Anyway, remember to share, like, and subscribe and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Take care and peace.